In this video, I want to talk to you about needs versus wants, about desires versus dependency. You see, we get confused sometimes about which are which. We don't understand the separation, the definition between the two. And that leads to confusion as to whose responsibility each of those are. Who owns those is another way to say it. And in fact, what we're really trying to get to is what are the parts that we can own? Because we can never rely on someone else to give us the thing that we want, right? Our happiness is not um, dependent on somebody else. It is not somebody else's responsibility. And if you've read No More Mr. Nice Guy, you know that even harder still is owning our desires, being honest with ourselves, and ultimately honest with other people about what it is that we desire. And in fact, we often downplay our desires in order to be accepted. We believe that if anyone knew what we really wanted, what we really thought, who we really are, then we would be rejected, that we wouldn't be accepted, it wouldn't be approved, that we would upset somebody, and that somebody might not uh, give us the love, affection, desire um, that we are looking for. And the complicated part about that is that we have a view of ourself as a person, and then we have a view of what this other person, what we think this other person can give us that we feel like we don't have already. And so we look outside of us to this other person. And, and, then, and a lot of times in marriage, this is, this is happening on both sides. It's, it's happening on your side. It's happening on her side. And uh, we, we call that a relationship, right? We, a relationship is not a third person. It's not a third party that is um, separate in your in your togetherness it's actually made up of you and how you're being and her and how she's being and how the two intersect how they overlap how they relate to each other so we have an experience of the other person and the other person has an experience of us but that's a topic for a whole other video what i'm talking about today is to be able to know one, it's okay to have desires. It's okay for you to want what you want. A lot of times there's shame, fear, anxiety wrapped up in that, right? Being like, hey, I want this, and then you're afraid that somebody's not going to approve of that. They're not going to like it. And maybe in some ways they have it, but they're not giving it to you so you feel like they're keeping you from it. What we find is that we do the recovery work is we start to realize that it's okay for us to have desires, it's okay for us to have wants, it's not okay for us to demand it from the other person. And so it becomes really obvious as we do the work how much of it is ours to own and how much of it is the other person's to own. Because if we can't demand it from the other person, right? If we can't say, hey, I want these things and then slide that across the table like some sort of negotiating contract, right? That the other person needs to sign, then we have to actually write those things down, be clear about them and then own them. And if we're not experiencing what we want with this other person, then we can say, hey, hold on. Am I contributing to the disconnection? Am I contributing to this situation in some way? And some, day, some ways, when I talk with guys, sometimes what we're doing, and I know that I did this in my own relationship, we're shutting down communication with her, right? We're shutting down her emotional safety. She's, she doesn't feel um, that it's okay to open up and talk to us. So she withholds and she pulls back and she withdraws. and then we, we feel that, we experience that, and so we blame her for that. But we don't recognize that we are contributing to that. But then there's other times when it's not something that we have any control over. We have um, the other person brings to the, the party their own uh, set of issues and their own things that they're trying to work on and recover from. And so if we're not experiencing something with that person, 
We may not be able to. It may not be possible to experience it with that person. And rather than blame them, be mad at them, and, and feel like that's some sort of judgment on us, we could actually uh, decide that we need to make new choices for ourselves. Maybe we need to end the relationship. Maybe we need to uh, take time to work on ourselves. Maybe we need to just be honest and be clear about what it is that we want and give the other person an opportunity to say whether or not that's what they want as well. But we can't do that until we own, right? Till we're honest with ourselves and others about what it is that we want. And a lot of times, shame, fear, insecurities, anxiety, that keeps us from owning those things. It keeps us from being honest with ourselves. So here's what I do. I help men with that. I help them through conversation. We get on a phone call. We talk with each other. I listen to what the man has to say. I ask questions from a curious place, not a place of judgment, not a place of criticism, but a place of curiosity. So tell me what you mean by that. Tell me what that would look like for you. Tell me why do you think that you want that? Where did that come from? And as the man begins to think about these things, and verbalize these things, he's actually able to hear himself for the first time. Sometimes he's able to hear that clarity and what it is that he wants, and sometimes it's, it's that he can actually hear that he wants something, but he's not clear about what it is. And so we talk, and we get down to that point, because at the end of the day, you have all the answers for yourself, how you want to live your life, what you want to experience, who you want to be. And it just takes a conversation with someone who can listen, who can ask questions, who can challenge, and who can walk with you, point to resources, and accept you without judgment, without criticism, and help you get that clarity for yourself that you want. And I can help you do that. I can also help you do that as part of mentoring men. That's my community. I want to invite you into it. There's a link in the description. It's a community of supportive men who have been through and are going through what you're going through right now and so they get it. They understand. It's not a it's not a bro community. It's not a community where guys are just going to tell you what you want to hear. They're actually going to support, listen, empathize and be there for you when you have questions, when things get tough, and what happens is you wind up building real relationships with these men. You wind up meeting with them in person. I've traveled all across the country. I've traveled uh, international to meet up with men, and each one of those meetings has been transformational. It's, it's transformed me as a man, as a person, and I know that it will do the same for you. So link in the description, you know what to do, click on it, go take a look at that. Let's set up a conversation, let's talk, and uh, join the community, join Mentoring Men. We've got uh, free courses there, we've got paid courses, we've got weekly calls where you can get on and talk about what's going on so you can get that clarity for yourself between what's a want, what's a need, what's a desire, and what's a dependency. All right, talk to you later.